very simple and uh, neat. Here we have uh, gone ahead, a, a step ahead, and given a lot of workmanship, a lot of detailing to the uh, to the nut. And that's something which is very popular, and we're getting a lot of demand for these kind of accessories now. So no wonder the movie was a blockbuster hit, super hit, and it also worked very well in in our favor as well. Um, uh, it, it, uh, and, and it's no surprise that we crossed the 200 crore mark faster than the movie did. Uh, so Padmavan, I would say, is creating a lot of new trends for us, which are going to be a little long-term and uh, uh, redefining the way our consumers are uh, experiencing jewelry. With that, thank you. We do a pop time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you can tweet your questions in. Please keep those tweets coming. We'd like to take questions. Abhishek, uh, so you're a NIF student. You've had, a, you've had quite a journey from NIF to SAFE to being now, you know, one of the most prestigious, uh, I, I would say, you know, designations in Tanesh head of design. Uh, we have a lot of young designers here. You want to share a few, you know, say learnings you've had in your life on what are the key ingredients to being a successful designer? A long journey. Uh, I, um, I, uh, I had always, uh, you know, uh, one of my key strengths, I would say, is that um, I always thought very highly about design and what the what this what role design can play in an organization and in a business. So at times it so happens that uh, you know I was, I was talking about the decision makers in the business. They kind of uh, neglect the design, uh, the purpose of design in the business. So we do have design studios uh, in most of our, uh, you know, manufacturing centers and, and the retailers. But the, the kind of prominence and the kind of importance which is given to design, I see is kind of, you know, not there. And, and it needs uh, several more steps before we reach there. So I would urge uh, all of you young designers over here to, to really feel for design and, you know, and when you bring in a business angle to it, so it's important not, no, for you not only to be uh, creative, creatively uh, 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 doing very well, but it's also important for you to understand the business aspect. So when you merge the two together, when you understand the business, you understand your consumer, you understand the needs of your, uh, uh, your business, and merge and merge it with your creativity, it kind of, kind of makes you really successful. You've got one more question. I wanted to ask you a question about Padmavan. It is a uh, period drama. So the jewelry was relevant to that age and era. But is Tanish also planning to bring about a scalable type of jewelry which can be worn on a couture, uh, you know, basis? Uh, the same kind of jewelry, will you tweak it later to make it more accessible to many more, not just to brides? Okay. So sharing this, uh, some of the success matrix of Tanish and Padmavan, so the, the only reason why we are so successful is, uh, is that movie was one part of it. What we did is that we created a print version for it, for today's, uh, you know, for today's age and today's bride to really carry it off well. Some of them were really uh, heavy stuff, which was meant for that era as you are talking about. But we, we, we took elements from there and we then uh, kind of, uh, you know, brought it down, toned it down and created a print version of it. So that, that's all we did. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Please put your hands together, Mr. Abhishek Raskoti. Please wait and stay inside. We'd like to present you a small memento and token of appreciation. I'll request Mr. Colin Shah, uh, the Vice Chairman of the Council, to kindly do the honors and make the presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalman Shah. Thank you, Mr. Rastogi. Uh, just a little bit about the Q&A. We'd like more questions to come from all of you out there. I know you can just take a little time to get warmed up, but please send those questions. If you're a little shy about uh, asking for the mic, please tweet the questions in. GGBCAP is the Twitter handle. Tweet those questions. They will be answered by our speaker. 
if you like the mic, we'll pass it on to you. Introduce yourself and uh, keep the questions short and relevant. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take a quick 10 minute tea and coffee break. Please carry your cups of tea and coffee in with you and enjoy it while our next session begins. Exactly 10 minutes. We'll see you at 10 minutes to 12. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our post session of the first morning of Design Inspirations 2018. This session will put the spotlight on sustainable open gear jewelry and inevitable future. And our expert in this session embodies the modern woman. Her signature collection is handcrafted by master craftsmen in New York using hand-picked diamonds and colored gemstones set in platinum and 18 karat gold, bearing her AM logo. She launched her first collection in December 2010 at New York's Philip de Puri. Today, her exquisite creations are written about, coveted by the finest jewelry connoisseurs, and worn on the red carpet by celebrities and superstars like Oprah Winfrey, Kate Winslet, Naomi Campbell, Debbie Moore, Brooke Shields, and many others. To share her perspectives, we will have none other than Alexandra Moore. But before we bring her on stage, I'd like to introduce another expert, someone who's been a part of Design Inspirations over the years. She's the founder of Futurist Limited, which in partnership with Italy's Vicente Affair, organized one of the world's leading jewelry trade fairs, co-founded in 2012, Trend Vision Jewelry Plus Forecasting, an independent observatory forecasting on trends for the jewelry industry. It will be my privilege to introduce her in more detail later in the afternoon when she takes a full session with us. But right now, to engage in conversation with Alexandra Moore, please welcome Paula Di Luca. excitement of the past few years, my thoughts take me back to my childhood and to my mother, seamstress who tailored all my clothes by hand until I was in my teens. The smell of the wrong fabric, the sound of shears cutting cloth, the clouds of skin from the iron, all these things awakened my senses and inspired my imagination as a kid. I now realize how special it was to grow up in this environment. One that truly celebrated and encouraged passion, passion for original, passion for the spoke. One that taught me all I know today about creating my own life. 
This was the first taste of this kind of magic. It continues to inspire my collections. Today, today I wake up to the smell of burning yellow ochre and my morning coffee. I feel so fortunate to do what I love. Pause to take it all in. Surrounded by my pencils, photos, my sketchbook, and some of those diamonds. Shapes, lines of colors run through my head. I lean into my drafting table and let my mind loose. A jewel is about to come to life.
if not one time, probably going to fall in love with it, but at least one time to sit on the bench and get the experience of what it means and what it feels to to, uh, to create a jewel from, from nothing, whether it's stone setting or carving or filing wax or soldering, just a really different experience. And learning the materials and understanding how it works was what I did spending almost two years. I started in 2000 and uh, the idea came in 2004. I was six months pregnant with my first son, Adam, who is today uh, 14 almost. And then from there, I would say four years, 2004, 2010, I was uh, conceiving the idea and taking really slow um, conversations and developing the brand DNA and the knife edge with the diamond nailing on the side, which is the signature detail yellow gold line in the sky, all that in about four years. And I was happy, I was lucky to have the privilege, and I'm not, and not everybody has that length of time to do it, but if you can do it, and really take, take the time that you need to take to develop your idea, your passion, your concept, I think this is really where um, you start with the right foot and you enter the business. How was your approach with diamonds? I mean, you, you are like, you know, diamonds a lot, and this is the country of diamonds, and that's where the rock are polished and cut. I mean, how was your first approach to diamonds and getting to the end of that? Okay, so, I don't know if, if I should say that or not. <laughs> I knew nothing about diamonds until I got my engagement ring. Well, that is, you've done pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I knew nothing about diamonds where I come from, not in my family, and not in the country I grew up in Israel. Uh, we didn't grow up on uh, Papa's going to give you a diamond ring, you know? It wasn't any lullaby like that. And so coming to America and being exposed to that culture,